So hopefully that helps kind of explain at least the high level of why you should even sort of care about blockchain. Please share this on a Facebook group or a subreddit. It really does help me find a new audience. My subscriber counts just kind of treading water these days and I'd really love it if you guys would pay it for You hear these buzzwords of blockchain, Ethereum, Bitcoin, altcoin, smart contracts, atomic swaps. I mean, WTF, what does this stuff even mean? And so a bunch of you recently have been asking me in the comments section and on the Cashflow to Go show about cryptocurrencies. And I really didn't know a lot about them. I understood the basic concepts of an open distributed ledger, but beyond that, I really didn't know much. So before I really started creating YouTube content around it, I want to get a much better, more fundamental understanding of it. So before we jump into this series of videos on cryptocurrencies, on blockchain and on Bitcoin, I just want to get a few things out of the way. First, I own zero cryptocurrencies right now, and I have zero intention of owning cryptocurrencies in the near future. So first of all, just letting you guys know where I stand on it. But in addition to that, I just kind of want to let all the hackers out there, the attack YouTubers that do videos on cryptocurrencies know that I literally have zero, so please don't, please don't come at me, bro. But I do think blockchain is actually a really interesting technology that is going to drastically change the future, or at least has the potential to. And before I could even really talk to you guys about things like bitcoins or altcoins or cryptocurrencies in general, I realized we needed to really kind of talk about, first of all, what blockchain is, why it's important, as well as kind of like how it works, how an open distributed ledger works. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here to cover and, and I knew very little about the subject matter. So I decided to read a bunch, watch a bunch of TED Talks, listen to a bunch of podcasts on the subject matter, and then uh, regurgitate it for you guys, hopefully in a manner that sort of makes sense. So this is gonna be video one, and we're just gonna simply talk about why blockchain's important, why you should even care about blockchain. And I'm not saying that you need to care about cryptocurrencies today. I'm not saying you need to care about Bitcoin or altcoins. I'm not saying you should buy them or invest in them or gamble in them, in my opinion. But what I am saying is it's really naive to ignore blockchain. It feels similar to trying to ignore social media or like the internet or telecommunications or the printing press. And so in this video, I'm actually ripping off a TED Talk by uh, Richie Edwaru, and so I have no idea if I pronounced his name right. I'm gonna link down to that TEDx though, and you guys should definitely check it out. I found it very informative as a beginner to learn at least basics about blockchain. And what I found really interesting about it is he broke out the different revolutions that have occurred in recent memory in regards to how they kind of transformed our economy, transformed our way of life. And the first one he focused on was the printing press. And so what the printing press revolutionized was the knowledge gap between people. Up until that point, we really just had kind of a ruling class, the clergy, a small educated group that had access to information. Otherwise, everyone else was just kind of in the dark. But that all changed with the printing press, which made it which made it way easier to copy information and share information amongst individuals. So that drastically changed society. The second revolution that occurred was the industrialization or the invention of the combustible engine. Uh, what this essentially resulted in was huge industrialization. It, it partially led to the destruction of things like the slave economy, indentured servitude, feudalism, all that stuff kind of faded away in part due to the fact that industrialization occurred. We also saw the urbanization of populations occur because of that industrial revolution. Third was the internet or telecommunications revolution. You can kind of break this up however you want, but essentially the idea was here, it made the gap between people way smaller, the distance between people. It made it way easier for us to communicate with each other. And that communication changed the way we, it, I mean, that, that revolution is the reason you're watching me right now and I'm talking to you about blockchain. And so blockchain is what a lot of people consider to be the next big revolution. And what it's going to revolutionize is, it's not going to revolutionize knowledge, it's not going to revolutionize power, and it's not going to revolutionize communication. It's going to revolutionize the trust gap. And so if you've been paying attention to the cryptocurrency world or read anything about blockchain, you probably already realize that it's going to change the way people trust. And so right now the way trust works is we essentially say for a financial transaction, we use a trusted third party. And so that trusted third party is really vetted and granted a monopoly by our government. And so in this case, you know, PayPal or one of the big banks that you use or your local credit union, they're essentially granted a license to be a financial institution, to be a financial intermediary. And that, what that means is they have all kinds of oversight and guidelines 
but their ledger, their ledger of who owes what is actually still closely held. It's not widely distributed. Where blockchain, when implemented appropriately, results in no need for a trusted third party. You're able to you're able to validate or trust each other peer to peer. And so the concept of this simply is, let's say A and B want to transact, they want to make a trade. Right now the way it works is they use the bank as a trusted intermediary. So I send that e-transfer, that check, or pay you by debit or credit card, and the bank is the one that actually validates that transaction. And the reason they're able to validate that transaction is they get their authority, they get their license from the government. And so as you'd expect, since the government's able to grant this monopoly to certain individuals, they're able to enforce those individuals to follow strict set of rules. And essentially what this results in, it allows for meddling. It allows for a critical point of failure because the banks and the government are the only ones that have access to these private ledgers. So these individuals can't trade directly. And that's what we're kind of seeing as society abandons cash and moves towards digital currencies. So we no longer really transact with each other and hand over cash to cash. What happens is I just wipe my debit or credit card and you get that money through a trusted third party. It really speeds up the transaction. It allows us to it allows commerce to move way faster, but it creates a critical point of failure because we're dependent on the bank, who's dependent on their monopoly granted by the government. And so this is the point where if you hate cryptocurrencies and you're just sick of blockchain, you probably think that I'm sitting here with a tinfoil hat. I should actually, for the clickbaity title, I might make a tinfoil hat. Yeah, yeah, I'm a sellout. But if we use this analogy that blockchain is going to revolutionize the trust gap, instead of needing this third party, A and B are going to be able to just interact on a peer-to-peer -peer level, no longer needing it. And so there's a whole bunch of technology and information about how those ledgers are created, how they're distributed, how it's shared, all that stuff. And I'm, I'm going to dive into that all in separate videos on the subject matter. I, I think I'm going to end up making dozens of videos on blockchain, open ledgers, distributed ledgers, as well as... Uh, actually gets into cryptocurrencies which is probably why you clicked this video in the first place but it's going to take a few videos before we start talking about bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in particular but circling back to these revolutions or gaps that were filled in the past if we look at what the printing press did was it drastically changed the way we shared information it drastically changed the way people perceived reality it changed the way people learned as well it changed the ruling classes and how people were governed and managed then what we had with the power gap industrialization, again, the same thing happened. We saw huge upheavals, both in the way people live, the huge urbanization that occurred due to industrialization. And as well, as I mentioned earlier, this resulted in kind of the abandonment of feudalism, slavery, and dead church servitude. A lot of that was phased out due to industrialization. Then what we had was the internet telecommunications revolution. And again, that changed the way we interacted. It, it changed the way you know me probably because of the internet. And so that just drastically changed the way our society's interacting. It's changing the way we communicate. It's changing the way we do business. And it's also changing the way, again, that we're governed. We're seeing all sorts of upheavals in society due to the internet, due to the free flow of information, due to our ability to communicate peer to peer. So, you know, things like the Iron Curtain falling or the Arab Spring or WikiLeaks are great examples of how telecommunications or the internet revolution drastically changed the way society operates. And so the idea behind this is with blockchain, that it's gonna drastically change the way we trust each other. So it's gonna be able to make parties that don't inherently trust each other be able to trust each other without the intervention of government or government monopolies. So essentially what we're talking about is the potential complete upheaval of these third parties, of these gatekeepers, and of government intervention into a lot of the transactions that occur on a daily basis. So essentially anything that requires trust, we're talking about things like contracts or financial transactions or ownership or ID or authentication. All those things are trust oriented and all those things could and probably will see huge upheaval due to the embracing of blockchain technology. And so you're now probably over 10 minutes deep into this video and you're still wondering how does this all relate, Matt, to Bitcoin? Good question. So Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in general, they're an accumulation and aggregation of different technologies. And essentially those technologies are used to create an open protocol, which allows for peer-to-peer -peer verification through an open distributed ledger, which essentially means that it allows for, these, for this trust gap to be filled. 
it, it means that we can trust each other, essentially. Um, so we need to dive way more into that. This video just, we didn't even scratch the surface of anything really, but hopefully you maybe understand now the value or kind of why you should be interested in blockchain, even if you're not gonna rush out and buy cryptocurrencies, because I'm not rushing out to buy cryptocurrencies. But I think you should be learning about blockchain the same way I think you should be learning about social media or the internet if you aren't familiar with the internet. Which makes me question how you're watching my YouTube channel, but if you are watching my YouTube channel right now, smash that like button because I'd really appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and YouTube wants to check out this video as well. I think that this was kind of a unique approach to me explaining um, cryptocurrencies and all that jazz. So please share this on social media if you got value from it. Thanks guys. Bye. Oh shit, I almost forgot about this part. Um, so I also want to talk to you guys about what I kind of thought or was going to predict might be the next revolution. And in my opinion, that revolution, I think, personally, I think it's going to be the AI revolution. And I think that's essentially going to be kind of a efficiency or decision efficiency revolution. So it's going to essentially be the aggregation of all of these things together where we're actually going to be able to make really well-informed decisions, if that makes sense. So we're going to essentially reduce our inefficiencies uh, as a society, as people, as individuals, as irrational actors, we're extremely inefficient. And AI, artificial intelligence, I think will actually, it'll, it'll fill that uh, inefficiency gap that still exists throughout society. So I think that we've seen the knowledge gap filled, the power gap filled, the communication gap filled, and the trust gap filled, but I don't think we've seen the efficiency gap fully filled yet. And I think that's going to come because of AI. And now you probably think I'm crazy. I'd love to hear about it in the comment section, share your opinions, and let me know what I got wrong in this video. I'm sure that I oversimplified everything to your disliking.